The term AI is overloaded. Its applications cover a variety of topics from photo correction, art generation, chatbots, chess, and other board games. AI has also been posed as an existential threat to humanity. And then there's game AI. The issue probably lies in the name. Really, it should be called Game AS for artificial stupidity. If NPCs were actually intelligent, players would lose pretty much every time. This stupidity actually lends itself to the challenge of game balancing. But I digress. What this video is about is pathfinding for NPCs. Pathfinding is defined as the plotting of the shortest route between two points by a computer application. Most people actually encounter pathfinding in sat-nav systems, such as those found in cars or on your phone. The other major application of pathfinding is in games, in order for NPCs to dynamically move around the environment. So, how do we apply pathfinding to our NPCs? The first thing we're going to need is some NPCs to control. What you're looking at is a quick game I've whipped up in Piglet. It's nothing special, merely a window with an NPC at the center. If I left click, you'll see I'm placing a marker of which the NPC turns to face. This marker is all I can interact with as the player. If I left click on the marker again, it disappears. I can also remove it by right clicking anywhere on the window. Pretty simple. Now, all we want to do is have the NPC walk to the marker. This should be pretty easy, right? By the way, you can follow along if you like, as this code is in GitHub. The link is in the description. All we need to do is travel in a straight line to our dot. Let's go ahead and add some code to do this. The code first checks for a target destination for our NPC, and also checks to make sure we're not already at that target if it exists. If either of those things are true, we actually return early, whilst also making sure to set our target to be none. This saves us some precious CPU cycles. Remember, we're working in Python here. Here, the code works out the angle from the NPC's current position to the target position, and then uses some fancy math, known as trigonometry, to determine how much to move in a straight line. Nice and effective. So, as you can see, this works great. Until we stick a wall in the environment, our NPC just walks straight through, and the immersion is broken. Not good. So, how do we solve this? Well, first up, let's go ahead and prevent the NPC from walking through walls. Here, we'll just ensure that the NPC will only move to a target if it's in their line of sight. The map class already has the method to do that. Now, we can at least move our NPC through the environment, but this is a very manual process. To take it to the next level so that our NPC actually navigates the environment, we need to dig into a topic known as graph theory. Graph theory is a concept in mathematics, specifically discrete mathematics. No, 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 not that kind of discrete. Discrete as in separate or distinct, such as integers or nodes. Graphs, different from those that you'd find in a PowerPoint presentation, are a data structure amounting to a set of objects that are related in some way to one another. In more common terms, you can think of them as nodes and edges, the nodes being the discrete value and the edges being the relation with one another. Now, I'm sure this is all very interesting, but what does it have to do with pathfinding? Well, let me show you. Here's our map again, but this time with some nodes added. I've also gone and drawn lines between them, connecting them up. These represent the edges. These nodes and edges form our graph. Using this, we can discover a course for our MPC between two points using an algorithm. That algorithm is called Dijkstra's Shortest Path Algorithm, named so after one of my favorite computer scientists, Edsger Dijkstra. So how does it work? Well, we first take our starting point, and then take our destination. And we find the closest nodes to each of those. We can do this by iterating through our nodes and calculating the distance from our player and marker points, whilst also checking if they're in line of sight of each other. Calculating our distance is some more fancy math. Basically, the square root of a squared plus b squared, where a is x1 minus x2, and b is y1 minus y2. We'll add this distance calculation as a function in our code because we're going to need it later. Now that we have our source and destination nodes, it's time to find our path. The first thing we do is set the weight of our nodes to infinity. This is to show that we actually haven't calculated the distance to that node, and therefore we don't actually know the cost in distance to get there. Once we've done all that, we then take our source node 
and set the cost of it to zero. We're already there, so it doesn't cost us anything to get there. Next, we calculate the cost to each of the other nodes connected to our source. Remember that calculation function? We use that to calculate the distance of each node to our source node. One pro tip is to actually calculate the weights of those edges beforehand. Now, we label each of these nodes with a new cost, which is the sum of the current cost, zero, because we're at the starting point, and the weight of the edge. If the node's new sum is shorter than its existing sum, then we set a pointer of the parent to that node to the one that we're currently at. As all of these nodes have their weight set to infinity, all of them point their parent to our starting node. This will allow us to retrace our steps once we find our target destination. Finally, we mark our current node, which is the starting node, as visited. This means we'll never consider that node ever again. This prevents us from getting stuck in an infinite loop. Now we just select the next node to restart that whole process with. This is the node with the lowest cost that has yet to be visited. Then we repeat the process over again until we happen to find our destination node. Then we follow that parent pointer chain back to our starting point, and we have a path. Dijkstra's algorithm is highly effective and is guaranteed to find the shortest path, but it has one drawback. It's expensive, at least from the CPU perspective. Because games really need to be considerate of CPU cycles, especially games that are written in Python, this can be an issue. Fortunately, there's a very similar algorithm that we can use instead. A star is what's typically used in both the games industry and for satnavs, and for good reason. It's fast and does the job. The drawback? Well, it's not perfect. It's close to perfect, but will sometimes choose the almost shortest path. So how does this algorithm work? Well, you may be annoyed at how long I spent talking about Dijkstra's only to push another algorithm to you, like some sort of smug mathematician. But just, just hold on a sec. A star is actually built off of Dijkstra's algorithm. In fact, it's Dijkstra's with a twist. It uses a heuristic, which is another mathematical term. There's a lot of math in game development. A heuristic is basically a technique for solving a problem more quickly when the classic method or methods are too slow. It's basically a trade of accuracy for improved performance. In A star, it's an additional weight that adds to the node's cost. This weight is derived from the distance between the node and the destination. The thinking being that the closer the node is to the destination, the higher the likelihood that this node gets you to where you want to go. In our example, you can see that the bottom two nodes would be checked before the top node because of the addition of this heuristic. And with A star implemented, our NPC navigates around the maze with no problem whatsoever. So here is what the code looks like in Python. So you can also check out the source code for a better look. At the start, you can see we're initializing our data structures and setting the initial costs of the nodes to be infinity. Next up, we start the main loop, which continues until our current node is the end node. In your implementations, you probably want to make sure that reaching the end node is possible. In our graph, it is, however. We then check the neighbors of the current node. If it's been visited already, we just continue. If it happens to be the end node, then we break because we found our destination. Otherwise, we get the distance, get the heuristic, and assign that as the new cost. If the new cost is less than the previous cost, we make sure to update that value and the parent. After that, we find the next node to look at by looking at for the lowest cost nodes. Once the loop has completed, we reconstruct the path from the parents. This path is then returned. For our MPC, only a small change is needed. All we do is follow the same logic for moving towards a target, but we do it for each of the nodes in our path instead. Now, we're one step closer to creating an artificial intelligence they warned us about.